Hello, agents. Um, I wanted to kind of help you jump right into getting business. So I am going to go over really quickly how to write up an offer. So you found the perfect house for your people. And now what do you do? Um, I'm just going to go through here and just pretend that my client fell in love with this house right here. Um, this one on Eagle Ridge Drive. There are these little icons to the right of the picture. And this one that looks like a notebook is actually a link to transaction desk. This is the one that you want to click on when your buyer says, this is the home for me. When you click on that, it brings you to the transaction desk dashboard. From this dashboard, it's going to create a file for this offer. Now you can use a template if you want. We do have uploaded residential templates. Um, some are for specific counties, uh, residential sales, residential listings. And if you would like to go through and use one of those templates, some of those forms that you need are gonna be automatically updated for you. For the purpose of this you know, video, I'm just gonna go ahead and create one without a template. We usually do the address and then uh, we'll put a colon here and write the last name of your buyer. When you hit create, it's gonna bring you to wizard. Now wizard is where we put everything together that's gonna auto populate in our forms. It just makes it look really professional to have things already populated, whether they sign in person or not. At the bottom, you'll see the purchase price. That's where you can go ahead and key in what your offer price is going to be. I'm just going to put 729 because that's the list price. It also auto populates what the compensation offered by the listing is. Make sure you're not changing anything in this window for compensation. When you hit the next arrow, it takes you to um, your purchase and sale agreement date. Now, anytime you write up a contract, this date is today's date, the date that you write up these forms. That date doesn't change. It has really nothing to do with anything other than it just keeps everything together as far as one fluid transaction. So never change that date once you put it in. Uh, your offer expiration date, you can auto populate. And I'm just going to, for the purpose of this, give them two days to respond. We won't know when it's mutual, but we will know when our closing date is so we can go ahead and fill in when our client wants to close. Going to the next window, it'll pull up all of the transaction contacts that are already uploaded in this. And this is going to be the brokers and the, you know, the selling broker, listing broker and the firms. This is where you're going to want to add in your client contact. So we're going to add a new transaction contact and it's going to be a buyer. Buyer's name is going to be buyer. Buyer's last name is going to be uh, best buyer. Best buyer ever. And oops, sorry. Um, and then the email for that buyer, I'm just going to go ahead and put my own. And then we can go ahead and hit save. That's all the information that we need to add in this section. The next form, um, the next window of this wizard is going to be where we add the forms for our transactions. Now to find this, you'll wanna to go to all the statewide forms. And for a purchase and sale, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have our purchase and sale agreement. We're gonna ask them how they're gonna pay. So they're either going to use a financing addendum if they're financing, or they're gonna show us the evidence of funds if they're going to be using cash. So we'll click on whichever one applies to them. We also wanna make sure that we're adding in optional clauses because the first part of optional clauses tells us that we are not going to guarantee the square footage or the lot lines. And we usually wanna use that, that clause in there. It also has spaces for us to write things like, you know, the seller's gonna remove all their belongings or, um, you know, a review on the HOA if there is one. So we wanna make sure we add 22D. The FERPTA should be something already provided by the seller. So you don't need to add that in this one. You'll wanna make sure you also have the 22K for utilities. And then depending on the county, you might have Island County disclosures for Island County or other county disclosures. If there's a septic, you're gonna to wanna to put the septic addendum in as well. And then if you want to give your client an inspection contingency, you'll wanna make sure that's added in here. 
And once you've added in the forms that you want to keep in your offer, we'll go ahead and hit next. This brings them all up in front of you so you can see them in a nice list. Uh, next, we want to go ahead and see the things that are already attached to the listing. Now, the listing agent is going to attach certain county disclosures, the legal description. So we don't necessarily need to recreate those forms. They're already going to be on file for us. And once we've checked over between this window and the previous one that we have all of the things we need, we'll go ahead and hit we're done. Now from this, you can go ahead and fill out each one of your forms that you need to. I like to hit the sort arrow and change it to name because it makes them alphabetical and easier for me to read. Once you go ahead and turn those into here, um, we can go ahead and bring them in for the signing. So that'll be a next video of mine. Uh, this is just how to start your offer and get everything put together.